Welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit, and I'm here today with Carissa McFarlane, the p- founder and CEO of Patientory. Welcome, Carissa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Monica. I'm so excited to just dive right into your really unique business model. It looks like you've not only been an early um, innovator in the blockchain space, but you've taken one of the best, um, I guess, applications of blockchain, one of the earliest and most obvious, and really brought it to people to impact a large number of lives in health tech. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with Patientory? Absolutely. So my background is in healthcare business and IT consultant. Um, Initially, I was pre-med, you know, really empowered and um, fascinated with the world of healthcare. Um, Decided that, you know, I can definitely touch more lives through business and technology. Decided to go to business school and do healthcare administration. Then found my way in health IT consultant, which landed me into digital healthcare um, startups, which is, you know, still pretty new. Um, to the healthcare industry. I was working with a telemedicine company um, and just saw the technical disparities that existed in the space and decided to start Patientory back in 2015. So what do you consider a technical disparity that's going on? Well, you know, the most obvious reason is, you know, the lack of, you know, infrastructure communication between the different healthcare systems and just the monopoly that certain healthcare technology vendors have in really owning, like they own, you know, your healthcare information. (laughs) (laughs) So that's like the biggest, the biggest challenge right now. So in terms of data and tracking, is it that you're trying to just even the playing field or um, distribute things? Are you trying to just add more players to the field so that there are just more places people can seek out and have their data? How exactly does Patientory change that technical disparity that you saw? Yeah, so what we're doing is we're basically creating a highway, as we like to call it, by using blockchain to make the data that that exists now in legacy systems available to not only the patients because it's your information, but to, you know, interested stakeholders um, such as researchers, um, other secondary care providers that would benefit from having that information. So give me an example of, you know, I'm a patient and, and I use Patientory. How does it help me? How do I engage it? And how does it do something for me? Great. Yeah. In an ideal world, you know, we have a connected healthcare network. Um, An ecosystem, we actually build an app that integrates with this network to make your data available to you um, so that, you know, wherever you go, you'll have access to that historical information. And then we're using more or less analytics to help the individual receive better personalized care um, so that you're able to feel empowered and, and, you know, make more informed healthcare decisions. Okay, I need this already, like yesterday. <laughs> like yesterday. <laughs> I had a surgery. It was a minor surgery. It's no big deal, but it was like, this person, this doctor hasn't talked to that doctor, and I'm going to Google, and I think everybody's inadequate because I'm like, if Google can solve it and you haven't told me this, like, come on, guys, you're a doctor. And it was yeah. just that they hadn't, they didn't know all the pieces, and I had it in my head, but of course, I didn't own the data to take to them. So like, I needed this yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, When is it going to be available for me to get it? (laughs) That's what we're working on. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Do you have a roadmap? Do you have an idea of when uh, people might be seeing this in the market or even in small test markets? Yeah. So we do have a roadmap. It's actually on our patientory.com website. We have one for our blockchain, which is hosted by the Patientory Association. Um, And that's on ptoy.org. If you know people can, can go there and check that out. We've actually been running small beta tests. We do have a an iOS um, nice. beta version that's out right now. So can I can I download it right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. It's a wallet. It's wallet based. So we're doing a lot of tests in there, and, and as nice. you know, we're slowly bringing on people to the platform as we mature. You know, add more features and functionalities to that. 
That is fantastic. And I know that you guys also just did um, a new partnership with a totally kind of interesting company that sounds a little bit like a futuristic movie I watched several years yes. ago. I was like, this, actually, this is pretty. I think it's going to go that way. I'm not sure how I feel about my eyes being used to identify me like this. But, you know, can you tell me a little bit about Iris Guard and what you guys, how you guys even came to, to just form this partnership? How did it occur to you? Yeah, well, it happened late last year, actually, you know, when we started to speak with Iris Guard. Um, I, have, I had no idea they existed. We were in the UK showcasing, um, and their, one of their co-founders came up, you know, and was really interested in healthcare. So they have been around for over 10 years. Who would have known that, you know, wow. Iris Recognition Technology, you know, has actually been around that long. They've worked with UN. Um, they've worked you know, with the World Food Program and, and provided iris recognition. Um, Wait, can you talk about a little bit about what they've done already to help the world? And I mean, like, what did they do with the UN and what did they do in terms of food? This is really cool stuff. Yeah, it's cool stuff. So what they do is they actually have a tracking device where they've um, registered refugees and actually, you know, unbankable citizens in, in these countries that are, are going through turmoil who have no form of identification. Um, they've been able to track that via this iris technology, um, which is amazing, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, everything from identity to, you know, financial transactions, you know, a lot of the, the bartering systems um, within these refugee camps is actually powered by this iris recognition technology. Um, wow. That's yeah, very so, cool. So now they wanted to solve some problems in the healthcare space. And what are they helping you guys to solve? Yeah. So now they, they're, they're looking to expand into healthcare. Um, you know, they approached us and was like, yeah, we, we want blockchain. Like this is the next evolution yeah. um, for our technology. Um, they're really, you know, excited about our p net blockchain, that the healthcare blockchain network and, and its capabilities. Um, so right now we're, we're partnered with them. You know, we brought their iris technology to our blockchain, um, which would enable, you know, more privacy and, and private key pair functions, um, data management for our users and for our enterprise um, customers. And what is your user base like? How many users have you got um, just currently? So right now we're working with a very large health system. There's several large health system in the U.S. Um, we're working on a chronic care pilot um, study with over um, 200 patients that's involved in that. So we're rolling it out. Very know, cool. There. That's amazing. That is just cool. So how did you actually, um, when, what was the moment like when you realized, oh, health tech is like really where I want to be. Healthcare, health tech, this is the merging of like, you know, my interests, my, I don't know, was it, was it like all kumbaya and the desire to help it, humanity or was it just like, this is good it, business. This makes sense. It was, it was a, it was a journey. Um, as I mentioned, I had gone to business school. I did healthcare management, um, did a couple of consultant health IT gigs around. I was actually applying to med school because I was like, you know, I'm meant to be a physician. Is what I mean. Okay, all right. And in that gap year, you know, it was really serendipitous. Um, a call, uh, actually, someone from my alma mater, that same digital healthcare company I mentioned, um, reached out to me. And I had never worked in, in startups before, um, decided to join their team and, you know, love the concept of, of startups and, and healthcare and technology. So it was at that moment where, you know, you would say 15 years of education and preparation just turned, you know, to make a complete 180. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did I just turn all these assets into liabilities? Are they really yeah. liabilities or have I just not completed this story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, they, you know, they don't teach this in, 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 in school. I mean, in anything know. like no, no one teaches. Yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, here you go. And you're like, uh, life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, wow, this is it. Um, so that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you feel like that's part of partly what um, distinguishes you as a founder as well? It's just that your journey was not, of course, every entrepreneur, it's not ever a straight line, but that yours was, you know, uh, a focused line, but still there was a lot of breadth that you covered in there and that you're more broad in your base. Do you feel like that's part of what distinguishes you as a founder? Absolutely. You know, as a founder, especially in healthcare, um, you have to rely on so many different skill sets. 
you know, even with advisors and mentors, you know, there's just but so much information you can ingest yourself. Um, but I think having those experiences and different experiences in my past, you know, I started out doing research at a medical school, yeah. you know, kind of strengthened those, those skill sets for, for me to be able to, um, you know, execute in the, in the startup field. Yeah, absolutely. Is this your first startup or have you done other ones before this? This is my first baby. I've worked on other startups, you know, back when I was like a teenager, my family, they owned a restaurant. I did operations there. So yep. it kind of like came up in from an entrepreneurial family. Yeah. Um, so that had something to do with, with that as well. For sure. Can you tell me a little bit about what this, um, the iris recognition I pay part is? It's really interesting mm -hmm. to think about being able to go somewhere and have your, your money or your store of value somehow stored in your body that, you yeah. know, how does that, tell me about this. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I had no, I had, I had nothing, no idea about biometrics before this partnership. I always thought, oh, why do Kim just do their fingerprints? But actually, you know, they, they, they educated me. It's like, you know, your iris is actually more secure than, you know, actually your fingerprints. Um, wow. Your iris is more secure than your fingerprints. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, who would have known that? Um, so yeah, it makes sense, you know, being able to attach this to, um, you know, a blockchain ledger, you know, we see the story of the exchange out of Canada where, you know, all that money is lost. Yeah. Um, and they yeah. had no, no means of, <clears throat> of recollected uh, yeah. any of those funds. So it's like, why not have this trackable, you know, make sense to, instead of writing it down and putting it in a, a bank vault or a security deposit box, um, it just makes sense being able to tag that to someone's, to someone's body. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now, um, do you feel like before Iris Guard, you had a lot of key differentiators for what you were bringing? Can you talk about what really differentiates you guys and your company from anyone else that's like playing in this field? And then, of course, how Iris Guard also adds another one because it's pretty interesting. I don't know anybody else who's really doing this. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely highly differentiated in that respect regards to our partnerships, um, which I'll get into, but really looking deep into the core architecture of our blockchain. Um, a lot of the key, the early movers in the blockchain healthcare space are tackling more or less, you know, the low hanging fruit, provider yeah. credential in, you know, yeah. a lot of those things that we see tiered around now, whereas, you know, our blockchain can do that, but the core of our, our for profit company is really focused on the administration and the tracking and integration of, of data and how we're going to, you know, create the next phase of data integration from the current legacy siloed systems that exist today in the healthcare space. Yeah, that is super interesting. So you guys got started a little earlier than a lot of other companies in the blockchain and in the health tech meets blockchain space, right? You guys, yeah. um, you've been around since 2015, is that right? And you- That's kind of, Okay, and so how did you get from 2015 to 2017? Sounds like you were one of the <laughs> early 2017 ICOs. Is, is that how you got yeah. funded mostly? Or exactly. what was the kind of, how did this all happen? Yeah, so we started in 20, late 2015, um, started the company late in 2015. We were actually the first cohort to start in 2016 um, with an accelerator out in Colorado. So we did that for a big chunk of 2016 and just really getting the research down, um, our value proposition, and then, you know, pitching to investors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and did so you get a lot of private investors or was it mostly ICO investors? Mostly angel at that point. Um, 27, 20, at the later of 2016, you know, one of my advisors that I had just came on was, you know, just educated me more on the blockchain space, more not only blockchain space, but the crypto space, you know, what they had done back in 2014. Um, they were pretty integrated in the space pretty early on. And then they were talking about white papers and, you know, you can do a crowdfund. And oh, I, the white paper. You're yeah. like, is that enough? <laughs> no, I need a white paper. Like, no. It's going to make my eyes bleed if I say that all yeah, that in one big paper. Like, and they were back in 20, I was like, you guys raised half a million on a white paper back in 2014. Like, what, what is this? Yeah. Um, right. At the time I wasn't a big fan of crowdfunding. I was just like, oh, you know, yeah, great. 
Um, so you released a coin though, right? Yeah, we did. So back in 2016, we decided, you know what, let's write our white paper. Um, and then we decided to do a token sale later that year, early, and we prepared in 2017, early 2017. Um, so we created a token, we released a token, um, and did that token sale mid 2017. Um, and then from there, we've been developing the platform and the infrastructure. So what is your token? What's the name of it? It's called Ptoy, P-T-O-Y. P-T-O-Y? Is the, yeah. And is it still available um, overseas for sale or are people still trading <laughs> it? How is it? How is it, it is available on exchanges um, as well. I know we just listed last, last week, we were listed on this new exchange. I believe it's called Bitcratic. Uh-huh. Um, so we do get listed on a couple of exchanges. And how did the value of the token maintain? Does it worked out well or has it been tough? Has it been, I mean, a lot of people have talked about um, introducing the crypto side of things, not that mm -hmm. the blockchain is its own wonderful technology, but people get those two things mixed up and bringing crypto into the mix can sometimes complicate it and sometimes make it easier. It sounds like it got you some money and it also, mm -hmm. has, it, has it taken you off mission or has it really been an additive community garnering building tool? Well, it's been definitely up and down um, in terms of our healthcare stakeholders. You know, I had one customer say, oh, we don't want to use the token. <laughs> um, so it's still, I think it's a bit far-fetched for healthcare at the moment. Yeah. Um, however, we, we are working on ways and means around that because it is a big part of how the blockchain, our network functions. Um, in, in terms of, of, you know, onboarding, New, new healthcare organizations. But like, I mean, with, with the fall of Bitcoin, we've seen, you know, drastic decreases in a lot of these, um, you know, altcoins, alternative assets. Yeah, so for sure. So as we work on getting more adoption, we hope that, you know, we can actually see more uptake in usage of, of that token. That's great. That's wonderful. And how many coins have you released? What's your circulation and supply like? Yeah, so we created 100 million, we released 70 million, um, which netted around over $7 million. So we were roughly selling at like 10 cents, nine to 10 cents at the time. Um, and that's, and you know, that 70 million is partly in circulation. That's great. Wow. So you, you circulated 70 million and you raised 7 million by doing that. Yeah. That's wonderful. And was that a complete game changer for you and the company? Or was that just sort of because you had other uh, more traditional funders, it was a drop in the bucket. It wasn't huge. It was just, it was helpful. I mean, I would say in terms of what we're building, because we're building such a big platform, it, yeah. was, it was helpful. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be raising in the next couple of years. Um, definitely. But it was definitely, it definitely like spearheaded. Um, our development spaces. Yeah. And so in your, um, you said you have an iOS app that people can get. What is it? Is it just the patientory app? Is that what it's called? Or where <laughs> yes. do people find it? Okay. So yes. you can find the app. That's good. Patientory. We expect to have Android available by the end of the quarter as well. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. Oh, and the interface to the consumer. I'm really interested in how, you know, sometimes the best applications of blockchain, you don't even know it's there. Mm -hmm. I've talked to some developers mm -hmm. and they say, mm -hmm. they have, it's called the truffle theory. I've heard this, you know, you only need just a little, it's like a truffle. There's a little bit of it to flavor the whole thing. You don't really need to like be too heavy handed with blockchain. Yeah. So yeah. do you kind of lead with blockchain um, and from an interface perspective or does the consumer really just feel like they're getting, they just have their data and they feel safe about it? How do you address that from an interface perspective? You know, great question. And I love truffle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, I should get some truffle people. I know, right? Um, yeah, so our app, you know, you'll download it. You'll see it has components of a cryptocurrency wallet, but we try to really create a seamless ex user experience for the end user where they don't feel like they're using a blockchain platform. They're using like, you know, WhatsApp or any other app that's out there on the store, but you know, this is something really specific to their healthcare where they can actually aggregate a lot of the apps they use today, like cool. their watch their Fitbit um, to better, you know, curate a healthcare experience for them. Now I have, uh, for example, I live in New York City and I have a, um, probably have a lot of information at my, the Mount Sinai 
you know, my patient dot whatever. And I can download my stuff. I can hold on to it. But could I put my information into your app now? In terms of medical records, yes, your hospital, the only thing is your hospital would have to be run in our actual blockchain network. For that. Ah, so it has to be direct. It can't be that I take all my stuff, I get it, and then I use your app for myself and I have it all in a place that I can then share. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, we've seen, we're looking into actually patients updating the app. Mm -hmm. um, the thing with that is like, which is what Google Health and Microsoft Health fought right into when they tried to do a, a PHR about five years ago, was this, the consistency of how the data is stored. So it's like, you can actually, you know, we're looking at ways where the user can upload. You can what? I'm sorry, you just cut out a little. Oh, we're looking at ways where the user can actually upload the data and then format it in a way that would still be useful so that they're getting that experience. Yeah, from the yeah. Application. That is great. I mean, I feel like if we can get the consumer doing more for themselves, everything's going to yeah. can go faster. Yeah. So um, where are some of the places that we can find you with social and whatnot? Are you guys, do you have a huge presence? Is it, have you been talking to the crowd a lot or are you still just sort of getting everything done on a more enterprise level? Yeah. Well, you know, on social, you know, we have a Slack. You, know, you can actually join our Slack by going to our, our website, patientcare.com and signing up and register to join our Slack community. We're also on Telegram um, for free toy chat. And then we have a great community on Twitter. I'm also on Twitter at Kristen McFarland. Um, and at we tweet at Patient Tory. And for our enterprise and um, blockchain followers, we're also at Ptoy Network. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And this was like a very illuminating conversation. I really can't wait to download the app and I can't wait to update it so I can put all of my records because I've just started compiling everything and being like, if I go to the doctor, I ask them an email to give me my records immediately. I just take everything and hold on to it because I'm so, there's just too many it's too just spread apart and people don't know what's going on anymore. So it's I true. can't wait to have a place to put all my information. So thank you so much, Chris. Thank it's been a total you. pleasure talking with you. Likewise. Thank you again for having me. Well, I wish you the best with patient Tori and Iris guard, and I will catch you guys next time on the new trust Thanks. All right. Thank you.